Hey everyone, happy Mortgage Tip Tuesday. It's your favorite loan officer in the whole wide world. Hashtag who? That's right, it's hashtag JLoan. And I'm coming at you with another fantastic mortgage tip. But of course, and before we get into the mortgage tip, I wanna talk about what today is. Today is the summer um, solstice. I'm sorry, I knew I was gonna mess that up. And this occurs um, when the sun is at its furthest distance point from the equator um, and it's considered the longest day of the summer so today is a day where you'll have 15 plus hours of summer so i uh, definitely want you to enjoy all of that sunlight and sunshine um, uh, in many parts of the world um, it starts at as the start of the summer which in their mindset can impact your health in the form of greater sleep and also also a happier uh, disposition and there is a spiritual significance of the summer solstice and that is that it's a bittersweet reminder um, that nothing lasts forever and that's going to bring me to my topic today which is should I buy should I not buy and I write on here stop listening to the naysayers and let's think about smart financial decisions whether in this market or any market, a rising rate market, um, not a rising rate market, whenever you go to make one of the biggest financial purchases that you may make in your life, it is very important for you to really think about, are you ready to buy a home? Um, because there is a financial commitment, there is a financial investment, um, and if things don't go as planned, if it's poorly planned, then there is an impact that can impact you for the rest, um, or at least a long period of your life, not the rest of your life, but it could be a setback. Um, so when I read online that people should not buy right now, um, it, uh, I don't agree um, and we're all entitled to our own opinion so I respect yours but let me tell you a little about, bit about why I don't agree and I did some research and I always do research before I make a video and just here in my um, neighborhood I believe that they knew or apartment complexes popped up like tons of them in the past two years, which I feel like they knew this was coming. Um, and so now they put all of these great, really nice apartment complexes in the area for people to rent because what's different this time than last time is guidelines to qualify for loans after the last mortgage meltdown really got more strict. I came in at a time where rates were eight to 9%. Um, and you really could qualify for a mortgage with just a credit report, like literally a credit report and an ID. Um, we, we're not there anymore. So guidelines are more strict, which to me helps to try to protect the borrower um, in the most part. But, but, but then again, we live in a world today where, you know, I've done videos where borrowers get mad at me when I can't qualify them. And that's something that they have to deal with, not me personally, because if it's not a good decision, there's a reason why we said it wasn't a good decision. And we all know sometimes what we want isn't always what's best for us at the time. Um, and so anyways, in the area, I looked up one bedroom, two bedroom and three bedroom apartments. So if you're going to tell me that it's not a good time to purchase, but you're going to rent at these prices, which renting gains you no equity. Now, I am a big believer that everyone should not buy. Everyone's not ready to buy. I agree with that. But a one bedroom, one bath, just in one place I looked, 833 square feet was starting at $1,640 and ranged all the way to $1,850. A two bedroom, two bath, um, uh, 1,050 square feet ranged from $1,800 to $2,000. And then if you needed a three bedroom, two bath apartment, 1378 square feet range from 24 to $2,800 for an apartment. Now, if you're going to tell me that that's the best decision to rent and waste all of that money 
instead of purchasing, um, then that's that's your opinion. I I disagree because um, buying a home is a borrower's most appreciating asset. Um, besides stocks and all of that stuff, buying a home over the life, buying a home really makes the world go round because in order to buy a home, you have to furnish that home. So now the furniture stores are making money. You need electronics for that home. So now you're at Best Buy. You may need painters, which keeps them in business. So it really is a big circle of life when you have home ownership because you're going to pour into that differently than you would if you're renting a property. Now, according to Forbes, your net worth is 40 times greater for homeowners than renters. That's a huge increase. And it's not just in the property, it's in your mentality because people who take the time to invest in home ownership will also take the time to save money, will also take the time and to do investments. It's a different mentality when you are um, owning a home. And that's not to say that people that rent don't make finan more uh, smarter financial decisions. This is just based on a study. Now, I'm gonna go over when you should buy, okay? So one, when your finances are in shape. That's super, super important. Your finances have got to be in shape, all right? we encourage you to have three to six months of reserves now in this market or any market really but in this market i don't believe um you you got to stay in the home or want to own the home for a certain amount of time because you want to want to want to recoup the cost that it's going to cost you to buy a home now it's very important to understand that to buy a home you it it's it's three to three and a half percent minimum down and then you have another three to six depending where you are in the country to actually close on that home so at minimum you could be looking at six to eleven percent just to buy a home if no one else is helping you if you don't have that plus some reserves it may not be a smart financial decision because you have to keep in mind that there are emergencies or um, in the economy that we live in today, um, there's inflation and higher gas prices, um, fear of losing your job. We're just in a different world today. So if you're not financially ready to make that investment, then you should hold off. A lot of people talk about rate. I don't like to talk about rate because it's never about rate. Um, it's about affordability. And if I, if you could buy a home and have a higher interest rate and still pay less than what you're renting, why does rate even matter? Because one thing I do know, being in the industry for 16 years, is that the market is going to rise. It's always going to rise. And the market is always going to fall. Now, I can't guarantee you whether that's today, tomorrow, six months from now, or three years from now. But I do know if you hold on to this property long enough that... Um, it will benefit you and you will at some point be able to lower your payment in some way, shape or form. Um, housing has been the one of the biggest things that have helped families put their kids through college, have helped with debt consolidation and have helped families just to re remain financially stable. So I would never tell you to rent over buying, but the financial decision really has to be up to you. Now I am going to tell you when is it bad to buy? One, buying in a declining market. We all know that we're not in a declining market. And people that bought three years ago, you know, honestly, they've benefited greatly if they sold their home in selling their homes and making money off of those homes if they decided to do that. Um, if you don't have any savings for a down payment, uh, closing costs um, uh, or reserves, it's not a good time for you to buy, okay? Uh, if you cannot pay your current bills on time, you should not be looking at purchasing a home right now. It's not a really good decision for you to do that. Um, if you aren't settled down, uh, if you move around a lot, it's not a good time for you to buy. Um, if you have bad credit, and I don't like to use the word bad, but your credit isn't qualifiable, you know, there are lenders that go down to 500 credit scores. I used to be a lender that went down to 500 credit scores, but I would tell you qualifying you for that loan, one, got you a higher interest rate, um, and two, it was like death to get that loan approved, literally taking just your everything but your firstborn child. If you want to go through that process, then yeah, go ahead and get a loan at 500 credit scores. It's not easy. Um, another reason not to buy is you have high debt. 
So you're gonna take on a huge financial responsibility and then still have high debt on top of that. It's probably not the best decision for you to do that. You should try to pay down your debt um, and then of course look into home ownership or savings and things of that sort. Two, if you have no job security, if you bounce around a lot, you don't wanna buy a home right now. Underwriters do look at that. Guidelines do look at how many times you switch jobs regardless of what's going on in the world, the economy or COVID. If you are a person that job, uh, job hops and you have a ton of different jobs um, in the past two years, that is a reason for you not to qualify for a loan because they don't see you as a stable borrower, okay? Um, another reason not to buy is if you're in an unstable relationship, if you're dependent on the other borrower to help you make your mortgage payment, it's probably not a best, best time for you to um, purchase a home because if things go wrong, and you're stuck with that financial decision, that could impact the next seven years of your life. You don't wanna do that. Um, if you only care about having a roof over your head, yeah, maybe you can find a really inexpensive um, apartment that just gets you a roof over your head. If you're not really ready for that financial investment, um, then you, you shouldn't do that. And then if you're stretching your budget, you know, if, um, if, if buying this home is like really tight for you, that if a tire blew or if there was a emergency or if you got in an accident and now you need to buy a new car that was already paid off, can you do those things? If you can't do those things and it's not a financial decision that you want to make at this time. So again, I've given you my opinion. I did a little bit of research online if you're living at home and you're comfortable living there and you just don't want to make that financial decision right now, then my best advice is to continue to save your money um, until you feel like you are ready to financially um, and, and mentally be in a space where you want to purchase a home and you're ready to make that commitment because buying a home is a big commitment um, for you and your life just kind of moving forward. Um, I say don't listen to naysayers because, you know, people see we've been spoiled, right? Interest rates have been great um, and now they've risen, still not as high as when I came in the business. So I'll tell you that now they are rising and they have risen a lot in the past two weeks um, and, and several over the past, um, I don't know, six, seven months. And yes, it does make it a very scary time. People have lost their ability to qualify for what they wanted. And then we're in a market right now where there just isn't enough available inventory on the market. But again, I will never say renting is a better financial decision than buying a home, regardless of interest rates. It's about what can you afford? Can you afford that home? Um, and is it going to set your family up for success? or is it gonna uh, set your family up for failure? And we don't want the latter of the two. So I hope that this helps you just a little bit, just to get another take on it because you're hearing so much negative things, um, to really just take it in and um, take it for what it's worth. You can like it, not like it. Um, but again, that's my, this is my personal opinion. This isn't to push you to buy because I've given you both sides of when you should and when you shouldn't but I don't think you should let interest rates um, dictate whether you're going to make a smart financial decision. Don't let that do it because if you can afford it and you want it, this is a dream and you can do it and you find the property and it all makes sense, that makes way better sense than renting in the world today. So I'm hoping that I helped you. I know this was a little longer of my videos, but um, sometimes when you're giving what I feel is good information, it doesn't matter the amount of time, right? We just have a good time together. Um, so again, go out and enjoy the summer solstice, all of this hot sun. You know I'm a Miami girl, so I'm way happier in the summertime than I am in the wintertime. Um, and so be blessed, have a um, great rest of your week. Um, and if I can help you, just reach out to me. And until then, I'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.